In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessing Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, O oh Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Jim, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. First reading is a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not from with pass, the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the, or, the ori crown for men and an unsullied, unsullied life, the attainment of the old age. He who, pleases, who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away. Lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right and the whirl of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of, a, fullness of a long career, for his soul was, was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he sped him out of the midst of the wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. My 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord.
This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the gospel we just heard proclaimed, Jesus says to his disciples, do not, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. And then Jesus says that in his father's house there are many dwelling places. And he says, if there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may also be. These words are so consoling to us right now. It is Jesus Christ himself who speaks and who says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith. Jesus is asking all of us to trust him, to trust him. Jesus has prepared a place for Jim. Jesus wanted Jim with him. His place was ready. And Jesus came and took Jim to be with him forever. In the first reading from the Book of Wisdom, which is read, it says that the just man, though he died early, he shall be at rest. And it's so true. Our brother Jim is resting now. He's where he always wanted to be, with God. And the Book of Wisdom says that the souls of the just are in God's hands, that no torment shall touch them. Jim understood that for those who live and die in Jesus, death is not the end. It's just a change of address from Altadena to heaven. 
Death is, is another move, the, the final and the definitive move to the definitive home, to a place far more beautiful than even Altadena, a place made for us by God in heaven. I believe that our brother Jim truly embodies what wisdom teaches. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Jim's faith in God's word, his trust in Jesus is what gave him an indomitable hope for eternal life. Some of you may know that story that Fulton Sheen used to tell. One time he was asked to give a talk in a small town in Illinois, and he gets to the town, but he's lost, and he's looking for the town hall. So he stops and asks a group of children for directions to the hall. And the children, as they usually are curious, they say, well, Father, what are you going to the hall for? And he says, well, I'm going to give a talk about how to get to heaven. And one of the kids replied, Father, if you don't know how to get to the hall, are you going to tell him about how to get to heaven? Well, Jim knew how to get to heaven. And most importantly, he knew that he could not get there by himself. When his cancer came back after a number of years, Jim decided to start a blog. I think all of us are very familiar with it. The first entry was May 14th, 2018. And it begins with a quote from St. Paul to the Philippians. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Jim truly believed that his strength came from God and that that strength enabled him to carry the cross Jesus asked him to carry. And to do so not with resignation, not just in a stoic way, but with joy. Jim saw that fortitude was not only the result of his own struggle for virtue, but most importantly, a gift of the Holy Spirit. There is no other way to explain his strength, his courage, his patience, and his struggle over the years in his battle with cancer. As you know, Jim named his blog Fortitudine. And this is how he himself explains it. The title Fortitudine is intended to remind me of how I want to approach this situation. Boots on, face to the enemy, running to the sound, the sound of gunfire. Like a true Marine, but also like a true son of God. Jim didn't want to run away from the cross, from suffering. He was determined to embrace the will of God. And in that first entry, he wrote, right off the bat, I want to say that I want only to do God's will, that God's will be done. The first time around, it took a lot of work and spiritual direction to get to the point of abandonment to the will of God. I came to believe that it's the best approach. Asking why me accomplishes nothing. And I've got too much joy and too much to be thankful for to start asking rhetorical questions. Quintessential Jim. Boots on, face to the enemy, running to the sound of gunfire because he knew that his strength came from God. In the responsorial psalm, we see the relationship a Christian is supposed to have with God, a relationship that Jim did have. He knew that the Lord Jesus was his shepherd and that 
with him, he lacked nothing. Even when he walked in darkness, in illness and hardship, and Jim had those times, especially in his sufferings at the end, he knew that he was never alone. He believed that the Lord was accompanying him with his rod and staff to strengthen him. And as a son and sibling and as a husband and father, as a marine and entrepreneur and as a friend and as a son of St. Jose Maria, he knew he was in good hands. He knew he was loved deeply. Jim was one who knew the Good Shepherd heard his voice calling him by name and sought to follow him all the way to the verdant pastures and eternal banquet where we pray his cup is now overflowing and his desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all his days is being fulfilled in ways far surpassing his and our imagination. The day before his assassination, on April 13, 1968, Martin Luther King, a man who was full of, of human and natural hope, he revealed in his famous I've Been to the Mountaintop oration the relevance of himself personally as a Baptist minister of his supernatural hope, a hope that Jim had fully. And Martin Luther King wrote, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain, and I've looked over, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I think Jim could have written something very similar. He was not afraid. He could see the promised land because he had hope and he was happy. My last conversation with Jim was at Tilden on June 18th during the recollection for supernumeraries. And it was a very special moment. The place was packed to, to the rafters, really, and, and it really had a true atmosphere of early Christianity, like those rooms packed with early Christians when St. Paul would come to, to speak with them. And I was so happy to see Jim. I had my doubts whether or not he was going to be able to come, but of course, I wasn't surprised when he did come. And there he was. And it was a testament to his fortitude. But even more, it was a testament to his fidelity to God and the church. Jim wanted more than anything to be faithful. Faithful. He wanted to be a saint. Did Jim have defects? Yes. Was he perfect? Of course not. But that's precisely the point. We have a ten tendency to confuse holiness with perfectionism. Holiness and weaknesses are completely compatible. All you have to do is open the Gospels and read about the apostles. Each one is more of a dot ahead than the other one more of a goofball than the other one. Holiness and weaknesses go together. The key to holiness is to begin again and again and again, to get up again when we fall. That is holiness. And that's what I saw in Jim that day at that last conversation, which was long. I saw his desire and determination to begin again on the road to holiness. Jim titled the entry 
in his blog for June 6, 2018, Nung Chepi. Now I begin. And that's what he did at that last day of recollection at Tilden. He wanted to begin again in his effort to love God with all his heart and to love others, especially his wife and children, as Jesus loves us. Jim loved God. Jim loved his family dearly. You know, these past few days, as I'm sure some of you have done too, I've been rereading the messages I got from Jim from, for the past few years, emails and text messages. And many of the messages had to do with how in awe he was of his wife, Kendra, and how much he prayed for and how much he wanted to help his children. He lived for that because that was his vocation. He realized Kendra and his children were his ticket to heaven. Jim loved his friends dearly. He was a great friend. And as such, he wanted to make sure, really sure, that his friends, and in a special way his brothers in Opus Dei, were on track to get to heaven. And I have to say, I've been a beneficiary of that love and friendship. He never forgot to greet me and pray for me on my birthday, but, but he also never let me get away with something he thought needed to be corrected. And that's a sign of true love, to correct a friend, to help him get back on track to heaven, to be better, to be more holy, to do things better out of love for God. I remember a retreat for executives, which he put so much heart and prayer into. And after the retreat, many of the attendants were coming to tell me how great the retreat was, how beautiful it was, how awesome my preaching was. And, and Jim came, and in a very Jim fashion, he said, Father, look, the retreat has been okay. It's been good, okay. But listen, I got something to tell you. And he told me, <laughs> in his gym fashion, it was great. Um, you repeated several of the ideas that you repeated in other retreats, and two of the stories you already told them before. Cut it off. Work on it. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Jim's faith was such that he would never have wanted us to celebrate his canonization today because he knew himself to be a human and a sinner. He knew it. He laughed about it in a good way, like a, a son of God would. And he would have wanted us to come today to pray for him in the greatest prayer ever, the Mass, the prayer that he would attend every day, the prayer that Jesus made from the Last Supper and the cross that made salvation possible for all of us. That's what we hear, to pray for him. I mean, if, if I were a betting man in Vegas, I would put a lot of money that he went straight to heaven, but we don't know that. And so we pray. And hopefully the prayers will be kind of round trip. They'll go there and come right back and hit us in the head. Jim would also be grateful that we're here to console the family that he loves so much by joining them in prayer, in faith, in hope, in love, and in gratitude to God for the gift of Jim's life. I have shared with you some pieces from Jim's first entry in his blog. Let me end by sharing something from his last entry, April 20th of this year. As I sign off, I want to make sure I state my gratitude to my parents, Kendra's parents, my sister and brother, and Kendra's sister for dropping everything to come out and support us. Watching the kids so Kendra could spend days with me in the hospital or visiting with me. I should also express my deep gratitude to our friends from our school, homeschool, and church communities, and even friends from our old neighborhood who prayed for us nonstop, fed our family for weeks, 
got our kids home from baseball practice and regularly called to check on us. What great support all of you were. If I ever have to do something like this again, I'll be picking you for my team. I'm not doing it without Kendra. She takes such good care of all of us, especially me. If you're not married, search the world over for a spouse like Kendra. When in sickness and in health turns to sickness, you need a spouse who is the champion of almost everything who sets the tone of family life in challenging times, who helps kids know how to deal with hard times with grace, who loves you even if you can be kind of a jerk when you're sick. <laughs> the early Christians believed that to die is to go to sleep. In the early church, when someone died, they would speak of the dead person as being asleep. Like the word cemetery means dormitory, a place where people sleep. The book of Revelation says that at the end of times, the angels will play the trumpets and the souls will awake from sleep. That's the alarm clock in heaven. My brothers and sisters, to die is not to die. We will rise. We will awake. And we entrust Jim's soul and all our souls to the intercession and the love of our Blessed Mother. One of the two men who brought up a stay to the United States, Father Sal Ferrigal, used to always say in moments like this that for someone who prayed the rosary daily as Jim did for so many years, he would say that at the moment of death, he will be able to say to our mother, Mother, I have told you more than a million times, pray for me now and at the hour of our death. And he certainly, I'm convinced, Jim died on a Saturday. He was wearing the scapular. The Sabbathing privilege is that when somebody dies with the scapular, that next Saturday, Our Lady would come and take him to heaven. Jim didn't have to wait one second. Our Lady embraced him and brought him to heaven with her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please rise. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Jim Tierney, who lived a life of generosity and dedication to God and his family, that he may be welcomed with love and joy into the heavenly home of the eternal Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jim's wife, Kendra, that she may be granted consolation from the Holy Spirit, and discover hope in her grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jim's children, Jack, Betty, Bobby, Gus, Anita, Frankie, Lulu, Mary Jane, George, and Barbara, that they may be filled with the spirit of gratitude for the experiences they have shared, be comforted by this community of faith, 
and be sustained and inspired by the witness of faith of their father. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For Jim's parents, Jim and Marita, and his siblings, Jean and Patrick, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those friends who tirelessly offered support and care and meals and rides for Jim and his family, that they may be rewarded for their service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the priests who in their friendship brought Jim your presence in the sacraments, that they would continue to be instruments of your divine grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the St. Andrew's Parish, St. Monica's Academy, and Christ the King homeschool communities, and the church throughout the world, that as they strive to do God's holy will, they may be guided by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of, young, of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Yeah. 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Jim, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blameless sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially the Tierney family, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, 
that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those who have chosen. Therefore, be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, I gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei For O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in desire your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Jim Tierney, who have gone before us with a sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and from by divine teaching, we dare to say, Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificet nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Pane nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalum. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
for the reception of Holy Communion, there will be six stations, two in the front, two in the middle of the church, one along the communion rail, and one in the choir loft.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body and food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Jim may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we should joyfully greet him again in the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Christ who called you take you home near Abraham may you rest receive his soul present him now to God the Lord most high Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother James in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us remain to comfort one another the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever through Christ our Lord. In peace, let us now take our brother to his place of rest.